Hey everyone, sorry I can't be there today. Um, I got some, just a quick little warm up for us um, to get you going with the substitute. So the first, the first thing I need you guys to do today is pause this video, go to the agenda where you found this video on Canvas, so you're looking for the week of 10-5 to 10-9. Um, go to the agenda, go to today's date on there, and you are gonna watch a three minute video clip called Venus Explains the Atom. So pause this YouTube video, Go to the agenda, open up Venus Explains the Atom, and then once you're done with that three-minute video clip, come back here. So you're going to take out your Build an Atom FET simulation. That was a white packet from the last time you were in class with me. Um, and what we're going to do is, um, for my cohort A, we had them choose one problem per page that they wanted to talk about just to make sure they were understanding. I'm going to go through and do do that for you guys so don't worry about circling one problem per page um, I'm gonna go over the questions that most classes voted for yesterday because I'm guessing you would pick the same ones so the simulation looks like this um, so again we're gonna talk about a couple key questions per page all right so I'm on the simulation we're gonna talk about a couple things first page I'm mostly gonna be talking about four um, five and six so if we look I'm gonna go into Adam and um, number four says, what do all oxygen atoms have in common? Well, if we add protons, we see that it changes the element name. Neutrons do not change the name. Electrons do not change the name. So we know protons are responsible for the name of the element. And so I'm going to build oxygen. Lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen. There's my oxygen. So if I add one more proton, it's not oxygen. I can add neutrons, it's still oxygen. I can add electrons, it's still oxygen. And what I notice if I count up here, I've added eight protons. So all oxygens have eight protons in common. Um, what particles are responsible for the mass? Let me reset this guy, let's look at mass. So if we see there's a zero, if I add a proton, it adds mass. If I add a neutron, it adds mass. If I add an electron, no mass, so protons and neutrons are responsible for the mass. Oops. So what that means is if I want to get the mass number, we have to take the number of protons, which I abbreviate P with a little plus, plus the number of neutrons. All right, eight is a great summary of what we've learned so far. So I'm going to write a generic element symbol. I want it to kind of look like this but I'm gonna say A, X, Y, and Z. All right, so A is gonna be my element symbol from the periodic table. This Y down here is gonna be the number of protons. We said that all oxygens have eight protons. Do me a favor, take out your tan periodic table. If you find oxygen, you should see that there is a big eight in the box for oxygen. That is also called the atomic number. So all elements have their own atomic number, which represents the number of protons. And when we write the element symbol, we put it in the bottom left-hand corner. Up top, this guy X will put the mass number which we just said is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. And in the upper right-hand corner, if there is a charge, we are going to put it here. And we know that, um, if you're looking at 9 and 10, we know that the number of protons and the number of electrons impact the charge. So we are going to take the number of protons minus the number of electrons to get the charge. And that should give us a positive or a negative, so your charge will always have a little plus sign or a little minus sign in front. All right, we're going to do these two problems. On, I know you didn't have to do these, but let's look. These are the last two. Um, one abundant and stable form of um, iron has the symbol right here. Well, here's what we learned. We learned that all oxygen have eight protons, and that number would be here, eight. So what do all iron atoms must have in common? Well, they all must have right here 26 protons. So they all must have 26 protons. Iron has the atomic number 26. Find iron on your tan periodic table, Fe. It's right in the middle. It should have the atomic number 26. 
okay? How many electrons are in a charged atom of Fe? Well, we know that protons minus electrons equals the charge. If the charge is positive 2, and we know there's 26 protons, 26 minus x has to equal 2. So what does x have to be so that 26 minus x equals 2? x has to be 24. 26 minus tw 24 is 2, so there needs to be 24 total electrons for it to have a plus 2 charge. For number 2, um, you can see this is a box from the periodic table, and I want to compare and contrast to a symbol that looks like this. So something that looks like this. Well, what do they have in common? Well, I see that they both have this whole number five, which represents the number of protons or the atomic number. So the periodic table gives you your atomic number, your number of protons. The element symbol gives that same thing in the bottom left. I see that they both have the capital letter B. So those are some similarities. What's different? Well, I noticed that this has a number 10.8 and this has a number 10. So here's the difference and hopefully you saw this in your video yesterday this is called the average atomic mass we are not going to use that right now we're not going to round it we're not going to do anything we're going to use mass number which is protons plus neutrons the average atomic mass is actually an average of all the different types of borons whereas the mass number is just looking at this one atom how many protons plus neutrons and then as you can see the symbol also has a charge and the periodic table does not have a charge so when you're working today, you're just going to work on mass number as protons plus neutrons. You're, you're going to ignore the number on the periodic table. After your common element quiz today, you are going to work on this assignment. Please note that on yours, some of these problems got flipped over to the back. The first note I want you to make is that for all of these in the table, the charge is going to equal zero, which means the number of protons are going to be equal to the number of electrons, right? If the charge is zero, protons minus electrons, those numbers have to be the same for it to be zero. Okay? Do me a favor, find barium on your periodic table. It's in the first two columns towards the bottom. Hopefully you see that the symbol is BA. And we are going to use element symbols. We are going to put numbers similar to this, okay? So it, hopefully when you find barium, you notice that the atomic number listed for barium is 56. That's pretty cool because if there, the atomic number is 56, that also means that barium has 56 protons, and I can fill out this bottom number down here. So look at that. Just finding barium on the periodic table, we were able to fill out over half of this chart. So now I know that there's 56 protons. Um, I told you that the charge is gonna be zero for this whole table. So if I have 56 protons, it means I must have 56 electrons. 56 minus 56 will give me zero. And then lastly, we wanna look at the mass number. I'm not just gonna round the number that barium has on the periodic table. Look at it, it is given to me right here. This atom of barium has a mass of 137. Okay. Is there a way that we can use that to find neutrons? Absolutely. We know that protons plus neutrons equals the mass number. If I have 56 protons plus the number of neutrons, that should equal the mass of 137. How do I get n by itself? Well, I have to subtract 56 from this side and subtract 56 from this side. So my number of neutrons should be 137 minus 56, which is 81. Double check for me, is 81 plus 56, 137? Yep, it is, we are good there. Okay? So this chart is kind of like a puzzle. Not all of the information provided is the same each time. You might have to use an element symbol to get atomic number, mass number. You might have to use the name of the element to get atomic number and get number of protons. And then we can always find the mass, remember, by adding protons plus neutrons. Do not use the mass on your periodic table. Don't just round it. Protons plus neutrons gives you the mass, or the mass will be given to you maybe in the symbol. Okay, so good luck. This is what you're going to work on when you are done with your element quiz, and you are going to finish this for homework and check the answer key. Just a reminder, after the um, 
element quiz, you are going to finish that practice page, check the answer key. You do have a progress check tomorrow on Canvas along with an isotope video. You should get the isotope Cornell notes that go with the video today, so you have them ready to roll. And that game that you did yesterday, um, game mode on, this, on the simulation, um, you tur hopefully turned in a selfie. Um, that should be another great way to study for the progress check in addition to this practice page. Good luck, everyone.